What's up everybody, my name is Moss Norman and in today's video I'm going to show you how to write a Python script that posts a message to a Slack channel using the Slack API. In order to follow along this tutorial you'll need a couple of prerequisites. First you're going to need Python 3 installed on your computer and then you'll also need the request library installed on top of your Python installation. And lastly you'll need access to a Slack workspace and you need to be an administrator of that Slack workspace or have permissions to create uh, new apps and enable incoming webhooks. Now before we get started coding, I want to address the question as to why we would want to use the Slack API to post a message to a channel. And this is actually a very common use case. For instance, I might use the Slack API to automatically post messages as an alerting or monitoring system. Let's say I have a compute resource where I want to watch the CPU and memory usage. And if CPU or memory uh, usage goes above like 80%, for instance, I want to uh, send a message to a dedicated Slack channel automatically. That's just one example of a use case, but there's a whole slew of other use cases that you might want to automatically post messages to Slack for. In the past, I've even used this to monitor the pass rate of uh, Jenkins builds. So if a certain percentage of Jenkins builds fail over uh, a time period, let's say like over the last day, then I would automatically post a message to a dedicated channel, uh, you know, alerting the team that they need to take a look at why, you know, all of these Jenkins builds are failing. In the way that I'm about to show you uh, how to post messages using the Slack API is only one way that you can post messages using the Slack API. There's actually a couple other ways that you could do it. There's even a dedicated uh, a Slack API client for Python, but we won't be using that in this video because we're just doing a very, very simple example. Okay, so with that, grab a coffee and let's get coding. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna show is the Slack workspace that we're gonna be posting messages to. I have the workspace open in my browser, and if you look under the channels, I have two channels currently. I have an alerts channel, and then I have a general channel. And the channel that we're gonna be posting messages to automatically or uh, using the uh, Slack API rather, is the alerts channel. And the first thing that I have to do in order to be able to post a message to the uh, uh, Slack API or using the Slack API to that alerts channel is I need to create an app in my workspace that has permissions to post uh, messages via incoming webhooks. So from here, I'm gonna open up this workspace dropdown I'm going to navigate to Settings and Administration. I'm going to select Manage Apps. And then from this page, I'm going to select Build. And we're going to create a new app. I'm going to call it uh, Alerts Bot. And then I'm going to add it to our workspace. And then I'm going to select Create App. Now the next thing that we have to do with our apps configuration is we have to activate incoming webhooks, which will allow us to post messages from external sources into Slack. So I'm gonna uh, navigate to the incoming webhooks page, and then I'm going to activate incoming webhooks. And then when uh, we scroll down here, you'll see that there are currently no webhooks that have been added. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new webhook to our uh, Mossimo workspace. And from here, I get this drop down where I can select the channel that I want to, to uh, uh, give this uh, alerts bot access to. So I'm gonna select the alerts channel and click allow. Perfect. And you can see here, it actually gives us like a sample curl, uh, curl request that we could run from the command line. We are gonna use uh, this URL, actually not, not this specific URL, but if we wanted to, we could actually use this exact command and run it from the, uh, from the command line. And it would post hello world to, uh, to our workspace. Uh, but in our case, we want to post to the alerts channel and we want to do it using Python. So now we're actually going to get to coding. 
Uh, I'm going to bring up my Python editor. I'm using PyCharm, but you can use any editor that you uh, that you like. And I've already created a file and I've called this uh, Python file Slack message. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set up two functions. I'm gonna set up a driver uh, function called main and it will accept as uh, input uh, basically a message that we can enter at the command line. And whatever that message is, is gonna be the message that we send to our uh, alerts channel. And then we're going to also create a second function uh, called send Slack message. And that is actually gonna take care of the functionality of posting our message. And that function is gonna use the request library to, um, to make a request to our, uh, the Slack API endpoint. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import the request library. Then I'm gonna import sys, and I'm gonna import uh, git opt for the, the options at the uh, command line that we provide. Uh, and then I'm gonna just add a quick message about what this file does. All right. And the first function that I'm gonna define is the main function. So I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna define a main function that accepts uh, a, uh, an argument vector. I'm gonna define a new variable called message, and this is going to be a placeholder uh, variable for the message that is accepted at the command line. And if the user doesn't enter a message at the command line when they run this program, uh, we're gonna give it like a default, we're gonna set this message to like a default message for when the program is ran. So I'm gonna go kind of fast through this, uh, this uh, main function and because the, the point is gonna be focused more on the actual uh, send Slack message function. But now we're gonna walk through the options and arguments that are passed into the program at runtime. So I'm gonna get opt. And I'm setting up my uh, available options here. The first option is going to be help, and then the next option is going to be uh, message. So the first option, help, is just gonna print the usage of the program, and then the second option will allow the user to provide an argument to that option, which will be the message that we wanna to post to the Slack channel. And then, you know, if we get an error, we'll catch that error. And I'm gonna print the uh, usage if we get a option error. And then I'm gonna check if the user, uh, if the length of the options provided is zero then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set, that means that the user didn't give us a message and I'm gonna set the message variable to like a default um, string basically. So I'm gonna set message, in this case, if options are zero, or the length of options is zero, I'm gonna set the message to hello world. And then uh, the this, uh, for loop, we, I mean, we would typically expect only a single option in this case, but I'm still gonna use a for loop to iterate over the options and arguments provided. And if the option is equal to dash H for help, then what are we gonna do? We're gonna print the usage. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste that there. Whoops, there we go. Otherwise, if the op option is uh, dash M or it's dash dash message for the long option, then we'll set the message to the argument that the user passed in following that option. OK, 
Okay, and then finally what I'm gonna do is after we've uh, set our message variable and we've pulled the, uh, you know, the text from the argument passed in, I'm going to call a function that we haven't created yet called send slack message. And we're gonna pass into that function the message, our message variable. Okay. There's one more thing that we need to set up with the main function. Uh, if it gets called when the program is invoked. So if name equal equals main, then we'll, we'll call the main function. Okay. Okay, great. So now uh, I'm going to go up and I'm going to actually create a uh, new function and we'll call it send slack message it'll accept as a parameter a string a message string so the first thing that i want to do in the send slack message function is i want to define a payload variable and the payload is going to be what we actually send to the slack endpoint and it's going to be json formatted uh, a json formatted string so I'm going to define a payload variable and our payload string is going to be uh, first it's going to define the type of data that we're sending to the endpoint, which is text. And then the value of that text is going to be the input to our send Slack uh, message function. So it's going to be a formatted string. So mod uh, message. And so that, that's gonna be our payload. The next thing that we wanna do is we wanna actually uh, send the request or post this uh, payload rather to the Slack API endpoint. So I'm gonna define a new variable called response and that's gonna represent the response that we receive from the Slack API endpoint. And then I'm gonna call from the request library the post uh, function. And in the post function, I'm gonna pass in the uh, URL, which is the Slack API endpoint, and our payload variable. So to get the URL, let's go back to uh, our Slack, uh, our Slack uh, application, the incoming webhooks page, and then we're going to copy our webhook URL. So I'm just going to click copy, and then I'm going to bring up uh, the editor again, and in quotes, I'm going to paste that uh, URL into uh, into the function. Uh, I'm going to add a comma here. And then on the next line, I'm also going to pass in the payload. So data equals payload. So this is going to send the payload, which is our message of type text to this API endpoint. And what we should receive back in the response is an OK or a 200 status code. To confirm the, the response that we get, I'm gonna simply print out the response to the console. So I'm going to print response.txt out to the console. And what it should print out is OK, which represents the 200 status code. Now let's test out our, uh, our script by running it in the uh, terminal. So if you don't have a terminal in your editor, go ahead and pull one up and navigate to the directory where your script uh, lives. I'm already in the directory and the name of my script is slackmessage.py. So I'm going to call slackmessage.py and I'm going to initially, um, I'm going to initially uh, pass in a message. So I'm going to do the dash M parameter and then in quotes, I'm going to pass in uh, my, uh, my message. So I'm just going to say, hello, this is Moss. And then let's go ahead and run that. So I got an okay response back. Now let's check our Slack workspace and the alerts channel to see if it actually uh, posted that message. And sure enough, the alerts bot did post that message uh, to the channel. Let's run it one more time without passing in a message to just make sure that our default argument works. So I'm gonna run it again without actually uh, using the dash M parameter. I get an okay response, and if I navigate back to our Slack workspace, I see the default message is posted. So that's pretty much it. There's not a lot of code to, to uh, posting 
uh, a message to the Slack API if you're using the request library. This isn't the only way to post a message. As I said before, there's even a dedicated uh, Python Slack API client that you can use, but I think the request library, if you're just posting a message like this, the request library is a very uh, simple way of doing it. If you're doing more advanced things with the Slack API, uh, it might be beneficial to actually use the the dedicated uh, Python Slack API client. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, please consider throwing a like on the video uh, and subscribing to the channel for more videos. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave them below in the comments. Thanks for watching.